They may just be six strings and a chunk of wood, but in the right hands, they are the ultimate weapon of expression. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 guitar models of all time. For this list, we're looking at a selection of guitars based on iconic or groundbreaking designs, general musicality, and enduring popularity with amateurs and pros alike. There it is, Excalibur. Wow. I just fell in love with this guitar. Number 10. Gibson Explorer. Debuting in 1958, this is one electric guitar that was way ahead of its time. So far ahead, in fact, that Gibson ceased selling the model in 1963. I've got By the mid-70s, however, the market and the masses were finally ready for its futuristic style and it was brought back in 1976. It was estimated that Gibson originally produced less than 50 of the Carina Wood Explorers which, compounded with its eventual popularity, provided an opportunity for other manufacturers to copy it. It's a beautiful day. Though radically styled, the Explorer is loaded with Gibson tone and has a tendency to turn up in the least likely of places. And I was slightly like, oh shit, like it's a little strange looking. You know, I thought, is this gonna, are the guys in the band gonna look at it and go, what? You're not out, serious. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like a friend, you know, it's kind of like somebody you can tell your secrets to or something. Number nine, Ibanez Gem. Previously known for its high-quality copies, Ibanez found their footing and struck gold when they partnered with guitarist Steve Vai to produce this gem. The pinnacle of 80s superstrats, the gem began development in 1985, using the Maxis series as its basis and by incorporating design features demanded by Vi himself. And I designed this guitar with Ibanez about 25 years ago to fit some of the idiosyncrasies of my playing. Those changes include the unique monkey grip, a palm rest, scalloped frets, DiMarzio pickups, and a lightweight basswood body. The popularity of the guitar spawned the more affordable RG series and the seven-string universe model, which shaped much of the late 90s heavy and new metal sound. Number 8. Gibson Flying V. As with the Gibson Explorer, the world of the 1950s just wasn't ready for this heavy-hitting humbucker-equipped rocker. Debuting in 1958, the Flying V had fans and guitarists Lonnie Mack and Albert King, but the model effectively died by 1959. Throughout the 60s, however, players like Jimi Hendrix and Kinks guitarist Dave Davies discovered the model, and in 1967, Gibson tried again. With minor changes to the bridge and saddle system, the company struck paid dirt with the new, improved Flying V, and the guitar has been a hard-rocking mainstay ever since. Number 7, Rickenbacker 300 Series. Containing the short scale 325, the upmarket 360, and the popular 330, these semi hollow maple body guitars were designed by German luthier Roger Rossmeisel and are known for their bright, jangly sound. Better leave, 
first launching in 1958 and then named the Capri series in honor of owner F.C. Hall's pet cat, Rickenbacker's flagship 300 series helped create the sound of the 60s through their use by bands like The Who and The Animals, while The Beatles and The Birds both employed Rick's iconic and game-changing 12-string models. I asked my Number 6. Gibson SG Intended as a replacement for the slow-selling Gibson Les Paul, the soon-to-be-named SG first hit the market in 1961. Popular from the start, even if some players did miss a classic Les Paul, the SG, unlike many Gibson models, has never been out of production and is, in fact, the company's best-selling model. Available with either P90s or humbuckers, the SGs are appreciated by many players for their slim necks, incredible fret access, and light weight. all of which have made it a hard rock go-to guitar for decades. Went up to Brooklyn and uh, to the factory and told them what all I wanted and they built this guitar. It was the Orange Gretsch 6120, they call it. Number five, Gretsch 6120. Designed in conjunction with Chet Atkins and endorsed by the guitarist from 1955 until the mid-60s, the Gretsch 6120 reached far beyond its country roots. Also known as the Nashville, its hollow body and clear, crisp Filtertron pickups have made it an unlikely but gritty rock and roll guitar. Hot seller in the 60s due to its affiliation with the Beatles, production of the 6120 ceased in the 1970s, but the model and parent company were brought back from extinction in the 80s in part due to a renewed interest brought on by rockabilly guitar slinger Brian Setzer. Number 4. Gibson ES-335 Popping up in guitar shops in 1958 and following the initial success of the Les Paul, the ES-335 marked a return to Gibson's traditional construction techniques as well as its warm, darker tone. Equally suited to jazz and blues as it is to rock, the guitar was designed by the company's then-president and guitar-making legend, Ted McCarthy. The plan for the guitar was to be slimmer and less likely to feedback than a true hollow-body guitar, but more airy and open-sounding than a solid-body guitar. And we can see and hear why it's become a popular model. Number 3. Fender Telecaster As the first proper and mass-produced solid-body guitar, the Fender Telecaster was an absolute game-changer. Using then-new and radical bolt-on neck system, Fender was not only able to build guitars quickly, but was also able to simplify guitar building as a whole. flat slab of awesomeness, the telly has been tinkered with but rarely tampered with, and has changed very little since 1950. Although initially mocked, it cut on quickly with guitarists falling hard for the sharp, twangy attack, while its cutting, versatile sound made every musician who played it feel right at home.
Number two, Fender Stratocaster. Although almost the default electric guitar today, the Fender Stratocaster was as radical and otherworldly as things got in 1954. Fly, so From its double cutaway body, its cozy welcoming contours, custom colors, and its original tremolo whammy bar system, the Strat was unlike anything else around. Basically unchanged since 1956, when ash bodies were swapped for lighter, alder ones, the Stratocaster was partly created based on customer feedback from the Telecaster and, in a world before Jimi Hendrix, was intended for country music. Instead, the Strat has popped up in the arms of everyone from Buddy Holly to Weezer. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Number one, Gibson Les Paul. Designed by Gibson president Ted McCarthy and endorsed in perpetuity by guitarist Les Paul, this maple and mahogany beauty was the company's entry into the solid body guitar market. Painted gold at Les Paul's suggestion, the guitar came equipped with single coil P90 pickups when it debuted in 1952. But these were swapped in 1957 for the company's new humbucking design. It was with this stroke of innovation that the legend was truly born. Although discontinued in 1961, the Les Paul continued to be popular among players, leading to the model returning with a vengeance in 1968. Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite guitar? For more humbucking top tens published daily, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. You just bought it. Don't touch it. I, don't well, touch I, it. I wasn't going to touch it. No, don't touch it. I was it. just pointing at it. I, well, don't point even. Don't even point? Be, no.